Now that we know there's no unused surplus oil in the Middle East, sorry, that's it. And so we probably have passed the Hubbard Peak. I think it's between 2005 and 2007. That's what my model shows. Uh, we always were afraid, what would it be like to live after the Hubbard Peak with world oil declining? And I have this list of things. Seven trillion dollars lost out of the U.S. stock market. Two million jobs lost in the United States. Federal budget surplus gone. State budget surplus is gone. Uh, the middle class Absolutely disappeared. no quick solutions. Zero. God does set his own limits. I believe that he likes to test humankind from time to time. And I think the test is going to come very, very soon. We've had this incredible period of 50 years of relative world peace and stability. And I think that it's put uh, the, the American public into a kind of consensus trance that the world has always been stable, that there's very little relative danger to us in these things that happen around the world, and that we'll probably prevail uh, in the face of all of these things, and that our so-called economy will just keep on chugging along no matter what. It's in everybody's interest to maintain the facade that this, is, this way of life is normal. This is what we should expect. This is what we should expect for our children. And by golly, we should go out and continue buying and consuming like there's no tomorrow. The, the economic benefits of living in a very stable world, meaning we're not at war with China, that means that we can enjoy a lot of benefits of having them manufacture all our stuff. We're used to getting all of our household goods now from 12,000 miles away. They're made in China. You know, everything from frying pans to underpants. What's going to happen if those supply lines to China uh, are interrupted? You know, what, what might happen if we have a contest with the Republic of China over the remaining oil in the Middle East and Central Asia? Is Walmart going to continue to, you know, get the steady stream of uh, everything from toilet seats to fishing rods from Chinese factories? Where's the media in all this? Why are uh, why is the American public not being clued in or educated or informed? Well, that's really an amazing, baffling mystery. The media are silent on the subject of depletion, energy resource depletion, because uh, there's no upside for them. Um, if they decide to tell the, uh, the people of North America that, in fact, we are running out of the very resources that, that fuel economic growth, uh, well, does that make anybody's stock price go up except for a few tiny niche companies that make solar panels and, and wind turbines? The major media have been staggeringly irresponsible about this. And, you know, m it may be because the attention span of the people in the media is as short as the uh, attention span of the, the American public. The hardest thing to accomplish right now is, is to uh, get America's attention away from you know, recreational shopping at the mall and Jennifer Lopez and playing computer games and uh, NFL football and NASCAR and uh, all their other current preoccupations. Reality is bad for business. What's good for business is the fantasy. We're happily existing in that, that bubble of the consensus trance. The idea that everything's okay and everybody agrees that everything's okay. Where is the oil that's left? We've heard it three or four times tonight. Sixty percent of all the recoverable oil on the planet is in the Persian Gulf. And so comes the Carter Doctrine in 1979, which says that the oil in the Middle East is of strategic importance to the U.S. and we will use our military to de defend our access to it. The world is already in a position where we are not fighting over major oil reserves, we're fighting over scrap. Enter the neocons. They have a plan. It's, it's a plan, in fact, for world domination. They make no secret out of it. You can read it in the uh, documents widely available on the Internet, including from their own websites, the Project for the New American Century. 
the domination of the world will first require, require the domination of the planet's dwindling energy resources. Iraq was intended as the opening act in, in a general reshaping of the Middle East and Central Asia. We've been told by our president and vice president to expect war for the remainder of our lifetimes. The U.S. would not be in Iraq if that country didn't have oil. Uh, the only interest of the U.S. in the Middle East is oil. Certainly from a military standpoint, we are witnessing a sequential war to control the last remaining oil reserves on the planet. That's the war that will not end in our lifetimes. I think this war in Iraq was really what stimulated everybody's interest in this subject. Ironically, it did a bit of good, you could say, in that regard, because people would say, why the hell would you want to invade Iraq unless unless it had a critical role in oil and it's now evident these weapons of mass destruction don't exist and never did exist so there has to be some other reason the united states must deny any possible competitor on the world stage from controlling the resources afghanistan and uh, iraq are the two opening engagements in what are, what are bound to be a long series of wars and international contests over the remaining oil in the world. And over 60% of that oil is located in places where uh, people don't like us very much. Can we control the pipelines and the wellheads and the refineries? I doubt it. All it takes is five pounds of plastic explosive and a camel to put down an oil refinery. Spending $50 billion a year in other countries in, in the Middle East, uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and so on, already, and then add to that tens of billions of dollars for Iraq, this starts to add up. This is, this is having a, a tremendous drag effect on the U.S. economy, resulting in uh, increasing uh, government debt, both domestic and uh, foreign debt, then, of course, there's the, the cost in human life, Americans coming home in body bags. Then there's the cost in American civil liberties. The American people are not going to sit back and watch this foreign policy of occupation and invasion continue indefinitely. And so there's going to be more and more dissent. Well, already we, we see there have been laws put in place like the U.S. Patriot Act, so-called which um, significantly erode constitutional protections for freedom of speech and an assembly and privacy. Are these going to be used against average Americans who simply decide to voice their, their disgust with U.S. foreign policy? I think that's entirely You will see likely. a lot more global conflict. You will see a draft reinstituted re in the U.S., and you will see lots of protests. You'll see lots of young men and women dying overseas in conflict. This is the infinite war. As this game of musical chairs unfolds across the planet, the Department of Defense put out the notice asking for volunteers to serve on selective service draft boards. Do you think Cheney was kidding when he said a war that won't end in our lifetimes? Do you think Cheney was kidding when he said this is going to be the biggest conflict that we've ever seen? It's happening. Okay, so what's the alternative? Surely we can get our energy from some source other than fossil fuels. If we had 50 years to say, well, in 50 years we can get 25% of our energy, yes, that would be quite realistic. But 50 years from now, no. 10 years from now, no. Five years from now, we'll be past the oil production peak and we'll be needing much more than that. There's no combination of so-called alternative fuels that are going to allow us to run what we're running in the United States uh, the way we're running it now on oil and natural gas. No amount of solar or wind uh, or even nuclear is going to allow us to continue living this way of life. Now, a lot of people think that uh, hydrogen is going to rescue us and I, I think hydrogen is an, an interesting example of a kind of a public delusion, the kind of delusion that arises when people start to feel frightened. And they have reason to be frightened because we don't have a plan B. And I think we have a great crisis coming in energy. What I'm most worried about is how long we've left even addressing the issue. 
And the longer we ignore the issue, the more painful the problem will become.